ultimate team coin needs check out utcoinsforyou.com there will be a link in the description and if you use the code CHEZ you can get yourself a 5% discount Hey guys, how's it going? Tez back again with another episode of the Chelsea Career Mode in Xbox One. We're into episode number 41 and it's time to get back to the Premier League. Now, of course, we progressed in the last episode from our group stage in the Champions League, which is very, very pleasing indeed. We topped the group, so hopefully we'll be able to get a quote-unquote easier draw for the first knockout round. That, as of yet, hasn't been drawn, but we've got two games in this one as we lead up towards the January transfer window. As you can see, we're still six points behind Arsenal, but hoping to get closer with this episode. So if we can pick up a win at home against Norwich which you would expect us to do then uh, that would put us in great stead moving forward but we came very very close to Fernando Torres in the early stages drawing a great save out of John Roddy at his near post but Eden Hazard is going to whip the ball in up goes Rafael Varane with the uh, with the header and unfortunately again John Ruddy is behind it to make a very very good save and he's been a decent goalkeeper for Norwich in real life but we needed a decent goalkeeper here and unfortunately the shot from Salomon Rondon was just too accurate a such a phenomenal finish from him right into that bottom corner off the inside the post take nothing away from them that is a fantastic breakaway goal lovely ball over the top and a great finish to boot but Torres was going to go close again this time John Ruddy comes up with another good save to keep us out and we stay at 1-0 and that ball played over the top there was by Leroy Fair now actually I'm going to be looking at Leroy Fair potentially scouting him for uh, maybe getting him in during the January transfer window of course um, Frank Lampard retired at the end of the first season Michael Essien is not getting any younger and probably will be leaving at the end of the season as well so uh, I will be needing a new holding midfielder and if I could bring in someone of Leroy Fair's qualities kind of an all-round player can go forward very strong defensively he's been dubbed as the cheap Yaya Torre and uh, I could, if I could save money and bring in a player that's just as effective as Yaya with uh, with less of a financial outlay then that would be absolutely fantastic so Leroy Fay is definitely a player I'm going to be looking to bringing in to the club in the not too distant future we're also looking for various other players but uh, we'll cover that a little bit later on in the video so you can see Ramirez is going to get us back into the game on the hour mark we have to wait to the second half for our chances our barrage of chances to pay off Rambo follows up he started the move he finished the move and we're back on level terms at 1-1 and just 10 minutes later he's going to be involved again feeding through Fernando Torres who has a good shot that's well saved by John Ruddy down to his right hand side proving a very very big thorn in my side so far in this game but Vidal's going to whip the corner in. Branislav Ivanovic is going to go up and it's going to end up going into the back of the net. And I thought, fantastic. But the referee gives a penalty. I was fuming at this point. As you can see, it is for handball. Although whether there's actually any contact with the defender's fingers on the ball, I'm not too sure. So Eden Hazard steps up. Unfortunately, even though it is a poor penalty, it isn't saved and we are able to take that 2-1 lead. And... I was so, so thankful that uh, we actually followed up the goal that wasn't the ghost goal with uh, a penalty that hit the back of the net. And uh, Andre Scheller was back from injury in this one as well. Very, very big positive for us moving forward into the January transfer window. Of course, Lucas Piazzon has had a lot of first-team football lately and has been coming on leaps and bounds for us. Up to 80 rated overall now. Very, very fast. His touch is improving all the time and he's getting to be a much better player. And he's actually in the first team for this next game against Watford, as are quite a few young players. You see Callas, Nathan Ake in there as well, trying to play a few rotations players in this one as we head towards the January transfer window. Romelu Lukaku was starting up top in this as well. Of course I said in the previous episode I am going to be looking to move Romelu on in the next uh, couple of weeks or so if I possibly can. We're closer to Arsenal now, just four points behind. They drew their game so we're only four points behind. If we can win this and they lose theirs then we'll be only one point behind but we'll have to wait and see what happens as Arsenal, not Arsenal, Watford came close there in the early stages. Troy Deeney, lovely ball over the top, loads of space. Nathan Ake caught slacking out of position, but fortunately Deeney wasn't accurate enough with the finish. And Romelu Lukaku, fantastic connection there. I initially wanted him to take it with his left foot, because of course he is left footed. That would have been the, uh, the foot he would have got the best connection with, but still, with the right foot, it was a fantastic shot. A lot of power behind it, but unfortunately the goalkeeper made a good save. Kevin De Bruyne plays the ball out to Lucas Piazzon. It was meant to be returned to, uh, to Kevin De Bruyne, and unfortunately it's JT on the edge of the box with the finesse shot not really renowned for his uh, for his ability to uh, finesse a shot in right into the top corner but nonetheless Romelu Lukaku is going to break from the uh, picked up possession really really well he just kept running I just ran and ran and ran and he just beats the goalkeeper to it to dink it over him Romelu Lukaku has not done that for me all season long the final game before the January transfer window we want to shove him out he comes out with a magic he comes out with a little bit of magic so much so that Kevin De Bruyne and Lars Bender absolutely dance in synchronisation there to, uh, to help celebrate the goal but we had to call on Petr Cech again Forrestieri 
a couple of very very good efforts there fantastic slide tackle from the defender to uh, to initially block the shot and then again a great save from Petitek to keep us in it but Lucas Piazza is Lukaku there lost ball lost the ball twice but Piazza is a beautiful ball over the top and again Lukaku just beats the ball there he didn't give up on it he kept running away kept churning those legs just got there in front of the goalkeeper and he's able to turn it into the back of the net to give us a 2-0 lead at half time but Watford were going to come at me again in the second half they've had a couple of chances early on Forestieri again tiptoeing his way through the box unfortunately Petacek is once again able to come out and smother the ball at his feet fortunately we aren't going to concede a goal there but Lukaku's looking for a hat-trick what better way to put yourself in a shot window for a transfer window than score a hat-trick on the eve of it unfortunately he doesn't do just there it does smash it wide of the far post and we stay at 2-0 but they were going to get themselves back in this game Troy Deeney with the turn and then through ball on the edge of the box to Acuna and there's a lovely tidy finish underneath Petacek into the back of the net and they're only one goal behind now and they have had previous chances in this game so I was definitely going to have to keep my guard up if we were going to stay at 2-1 and pick up the three points. Lucas Piazzon and Lukaku have been leaking up very very well in this game so far and they did so again here then Piazzon into Marco Royce finally Marco Royce has a goal another goal he's only picked up one or two so far this season but we've covered it in many an episode up to this point he has been putting in performance after performance and has come so close on so many occasions hit the bar in the previous episode this time he finds the roof of the net and we make it 3-1 and pick up that 3-1 win and all three points so very very pleased to take six points from this episode we only play two games in this one because I want to head into uh, into the transfer window on uh, on a squad report so you guys can see who is improving where uh, I know we did one about a week ago but this one is bang up to date uh, who is improving where what we're going to do in the transfer window and cover what sort of players I'm looking for and as you can see we're only one point behind Arsenal now which is absolutely fantastic they did actually lose their game so uh, very very close to the top of the table now we're in good form on all fronts Europe and domestically so fingers crossed we can push on through the January transfer window now we are looking to strengthen in a few key areas over the next six months or so with players like Michael Essien getting a little bit older and uh, Gary Cahill wanting to move on because he's not getting first team football Ashley Cole there as you can see is 34 years old now so he's going to need replacing I am looking for players basically in all positions I've mentioned Leroy Fer at holding mid as an SEM replacement Romelu Lukaku is going out I want a replacement for him if I get an offer for Tilbalt Courtois, I will be extremely tempted to take it. So we may have to find another backup goalkeeper because I don't think Jamal Blackman is up to up to grade just yet. Torres is borderline, getting on a little bit. His stats are starting to drop. We'll have to monitor that situation until the end of the season. By the way, if there's any player you want to have a look at in particular, then feel free to pause the video at any point. Um, but De Chilio is the player that I will be looking to replace Ashley Cole with, I think. He's been very, very solid for me whenever he's come in. Lucas Piazzon is doing extremely well. We're very, very well uh, well endowed when it comes to, uh, to talent in wide areas. Oscar is homesick, but I'm hoping to keep hold of him in the window. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne is unhappy because he's not getting as much first-team football, but he would be my backup if Oscar left. And likewise, Oscar would be my backup if... Um, if Kevin De Bruyne left because of course Marco Royce is holding down that first team camp spot at present but uh, we're looking for so we're looking for a striker Romelu Lukaku replacement we're potentially looking for a goalkeeper as a tip-up court hole replacement looking for a holding at mid with uh, with potentially that being Leroy Fair we'll have to wait and see what happens on that situation obviously Paul Pogba will get Paul Pogba will get mentioned again as Piliqueta has been disappointing for me so far this second season I may move him on and uh, of course we've got Danilo our first team right back so we may look for uh, although I may actually start to bed in uh, Callas into the first into the first team rotation um, but that is basically my thoughts so far feel free to leave me as many suggestions as you so wish for uh, for the transfer window and I will look into as many of them as I possibly can that's going to bring the episode to a close though thank you very much for watching guys feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind that would be absolutely superb feel free to subscribe to the channel as well there will be a link in the description and an annotation on screen in the top right hand side of your screen if you, uh, you so wish to do so and uh, that is going to bring this one to a close so thank you very much for watching guys and I will see See you next time.